we have moved into the music hall, and by way of introduction, quickly, it was uh, back in the early 1980s, Los Angeles was truly a hotbed of uh, totally inspired, very high energy new music. There was a, a real rock and roll community here, with people who were reinventing the music at the Whiskey, uh, the Roxy, as well as some other long gone venues like Madame Wong's, uh, the Starwood. Al's Bar is no longer around, is it? No. Al's Bar is gone. Oh, no, I think still it gone. is. Still going. It's still happening. <laughs> the bands, though, X, Wall of Voodoo, The Blasters, Alley Cats, The Plimsolls, many others, including a trio. Uh, known, among other things, for their souped-up version of uh, the Richie Valens tune, La Bamba. Uh, the van was The Plugs, and they were led by a guy named Tito Lariva. Uh, the name of the band changed to the Cruzados, I guess it was in like the mid-1980s, uh, when they made a couple of records, did a beer commercial, <laughs> and broke up. <laughs> Tito is back with a new band. Uh, you can catch them at the Alligator Lounge on Saturday, June 3rd, and they're with us right now in the music hall Please welcome Tito and the Tarantulas. So good, times have changed. Hates in the wind and the mountain falls again. My girlfriend's man, I'm out the door. My bags are packed and I'm bound for Mexico. Mexico. 
you get a small ovation because when you put a lot of musicians in the music hall, you, you sort of run out of room for audience members. <laughs> Tito and the Tarantulas, live uh, here at FM 101.9, Tito Lariva and the band. Would you quickly just go around and tell us who you got playing? I have a real sort of a, certainly a full service group here, a yes. full percussion section back here. And <laughs> That's players. Deborah Dockin on, on percussion. Oh, back in Rich's office over there. Yes, <laughs> she's uh, also working on the computer there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Lynn Bertles on violin and mandolin. Okay. And, and uh, this is Nick Vincent, her husband. They're going to have a baby. Are they? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess they are. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's pretty big now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's Mark Goldenberg on bass. And this is our uh, lead guitar player and acoustic guitar player. Uh, what's your name, Pete? Uh, Peter Tanisov. <laughs> Peter Tanifsal. I think. So, uh, Tito, what's been happening since um, since the Cruzados for you? Um, lots of uh, kind of different things. I, I After the Cruzados, I had to recover a little bit and I did a few films, um, a little acting, a little... He's quite the actor. <laughs> I'm quite the actor. Uh, every time they needed a kind of a chubby Latino, I, I was called. <laughs> He's and, a character uh, actor. Yeah. And then uh, I started just wanting to play, and uh, me and Pete started uh, Tarantula. We really didn't have a name. We just started playing clubs, and then it turned into a band. And one day a friend of ours, Charlie, said, uh, why don't you call it, call it Tito and Tarantula? So we had a name, and then we were official. So we've been around for like two years now. But actually, clubs. you, as, as I mentioned before, have been playing music in L.A. for, for a long time. Since right. Was it 70? Did you go, did you go back to the late 70s? or is Yeah, it early 78... Uh, the plugs started, and we put out the first plugs record in '79. That was a pretty vibrant time yeah, here in yeah. LA for it music. A, it was great. I was a fan great. of the the all the bands. I was in the uh -huh. clubs all the time. Probably too in, young to have been really <laughs> in but, the dungeons. Um, exactly, and, and I was in awe of you guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, not you. I mean, the plugs were great, but I mean, just all the bands. I mean, there was some. There was great music being made back then, and I'm wondering what it was like as somebody who was inside the scene. Well. It, you didn't really know, uh, you kind of were just going with it. It was this energy, uh, lots of, like you said, there was lots of amazing music going on, and you just kind of uh, were sucked into it, and, uh, uh, you know, the energy was so high. There was artists and music and all kinds of people. There was all these ideas floating around, and it was a good time, no doubt about it. It was a creative time. What were the goals for, for a band like for a band like The Plugs. I mean, you well, came out of the garage, I guess. And <laughs> well, in the punk days, there were no goals. <laughs> it was basically just no, uh, zero was a good number. <laughs> Everybody was into, like, uh, nothingness, you know, no drugs. No, They were trying to annihilate a anything in the past, sort of, that kind of thing, which is always good for a movement, I think, to clean house, sort of. So we were kind of that generation that cleaned up a bunch of stuff. And, uh, and then later, of course, uh, if you got lucky enough uh, and popular enough, then you had goals and well, kind of ruined it <laughs> in a way. <laughs> well, X, well, you guys got signed to a major label. Uh -huh. um, X got signed. And right, there was, right. There seemed to be, once that happened, there seemed to the some go -Go's, of the purity was lost. Right, yeah. right. Well, the Go-Go's were really the first band to break through of that scene because they were around too. Right. They were a punk band also, mm -hmm. even though they, they went on to be a pop band. But they had the real big success. And X uh, kind of was just steady, you know, Los Lobos too. Later on, I guess, with the Blasters, that was kind of a later thing. And we went on to be the Cruzados and get a, a, a major deal. And But th the scene was gone, so it was kind of a totally different thing. It was real individualistic, sort of. Still good, though. We had a lot of that se the seeds. When you did know. you when did you personally lose that the that sense, you know, the sense of wanting to break things down and nothingness, I guess you <laughs> described it before. Well, when I got to uh we did a film called Repo Man. We did some music for it as the plugs and I also scored the film with uh, Stephen Hofstetter who was in the band. And after that film, it felt like the, the beginning of the end, sort of, for us. We went to New York City, and there's where we kind of got serious. We got real hungry, and mm -hmm. we were all living in one loft-eating cabbage soup that Tony Marsico would make every day. Mm. Mm. He, was a, he was the only cook in the band. <laughs> now he's with Matthew Sweet. That's right. Tony. I saw his name here on the wall somewhere. And, uh, and then we started thinking, well, you know, let's do it for real. <laughs> Become professionals. I guess so, yeah. 
And um, we're with Tito Lariva, Tito and the Tarantulas, who, as we mentioned before, have uh, been sort of quietly playing around town. Uh, <coughs> Troubadour here and there. You got a gig at the Alligator. I know Alligator Lounge is sort of like a sort of a hang, a place for you guys. And, yeah. and you're doing the gig there on June 3rd. And I see we've strapped on slightly more electric instruments <laughs> for another mm -hmm. tune. Right. Can we get a taste of? Yeah. This your song. Rock this side? this song is in the new. Uh, uh, mariachi movie that'll be out in August with Antonio Banderas. It's uh, Desperado. Des oh yeah, it's called Desperado. It was called Pistolero. They changed the title. But uh, uh, this song it ends the film. It's the end credit. Stripped of all my pride, I stand here at your door, sick of all the lies. Oh, let me come inside. I couldn't see myself. me a tattoo in
Tito and the Tarantulas in the FM 101.9 Music Hall. Um, one of the things that, um, that, that strikes one about, about your band when you see them live, I mean, aside from the fact that it's a great rock band, is that you guys sit down on stage. <laughs> and then when you come into a radio studio, <laughs> we stand. when you can sit down, <laughs> you stand. Right, What's right. the deal? <laughs> well, uh, choice. I, I don't know how that started. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it actually feels good to stand up. You and should play. stand. I haven't played uh, standing up in years. You so. have to start standing. What do you think? <laughs> the rest of the band, can we convince Tito uh, to start okay, standing? Because okay. you can't see. I mean, if you're in the back, the clubs are getting right, more and right. more crowded these days. You know, when you guys play, and it's harder and harder to see That's what's going true. on. Yeah, someone else has uh, uh, noticed that. <laughs> Give, <laughs> no, you know what happened was when the band. Uh, started we were just it was real casual and we I had all these new songs and I had lyrics and I didn't have a music stand and uh, I'd put them on the floor so it was really hard to see standing uh -huh. up so we started sitting down I think that's how it happened <laughs> and then we just decided we wanted to sit <laughs> for the rest of our lives <laughs> <laughs> until now but, yeah but now now that uh, the bands actually have has a name and everything uh, maybe we should stand up Tito and the tarantulas <laughs> thanks so much for coming <laughs> thank back. you we um, want to once again plug your show it's alligator lounge Saturday June 3rd although I'm sure if you peruse the LA weekly you'll see the band's name popping up more and more in many different spots so and thanks a lot for stopping well, by thank you very much thanks, man.